Hello there gamers, and welcome back, it's Isolation Gamer 5 and back at you again of another video of our F1 2020 Driver Career Mode, episode number 11 today, for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. If you missed our previous episode in Monaco, eh, it was a terrible race, I'll just say it right now, it was a terrible race, shocking race, but we're going to turn over a new leaf and get ready for the next race in Azerbaijan, and as you can see, we're going to switch to engine column 2, because while Monaco wasn't very wasn't a track that requires a lot of engine power, the same can't be said for Azerbaijan. And you'll see why when we go on our fast lap, you'll see why we need a lot of engine power. But anyway, hopefully we can make up the pace deficit that we had in at Monaco. And speaking of engine, we're going to invest in a major engine upgrade, which won't be ready until the French Grand Prix, which is a long ways away, but could make up a lot of, of the deficit on the engine index. However... The bad luck we had in Monaco seems to have translated into this race as, well, while our weight reduction upgrade was successful, our, our rear downforce wasn't, and so we're going to have to invest in it again. Unfortunately, we don't have enough resource points, so we got to wait until that is ready. Here's our chassis weight redistribution upgrade, which was successful, thankfully. And with the weekly resources we'll have, we'll have uh, acquired, we now have enough upgrades, enough resource points to purchase that rear downforce upgrade, but not much else after that, so, and that won't be ready until France as well, so, got a lot of waiting to do, but as we head into the race weekend, it's going to be a dry qualifying and a dry race, thankfully, and as we ap head into practice one, look at the time, compared to Sebastian Vettel, we're a full second ahead of the Ferrari, now at first I thought this was because everyone's doing long run pace in, Q in practice one, but in practice three, look at this, with the quality runs, we're two seconds ahead of Hamilton. So we've got so much pace, and hopefully that translates into qualifying. And here we are, into qualifying. And the one good thing about um, Monaco was that I learned how to use, cus use custom setup. So here we are, here's our setup for Azerbaijan. And as always, I'll leave a link to the video in which I found this setup in the description down below for controller players, really. But here we are, onto our flying lap around Azerbaijan. And as we navigate turn three, this is a lot of tracks, a lot of 90 degree corners, which is gonna really catch us out. And as we go through the chicane of Turns 5 and 6, I believe. Yes, that chicane's going to throw us off a lot. I'm just going to give you a disclaimer now. But here we are, into Sector 3, and through these really fast corners, which you kind of take flat out, honestly, this is where we get all the overspeed from. Because look at the slipstream effect. We're using Verstappen for, as in a slipstream. We burst past them with DRS open, and it's, yeah, it's just so powerful here. But that also means you have to be very careful. But... I mean, God, if we got, got P1 in an Alfa Romeo, that, that's that's insane. We Okay, well, we're just going to roll with this. And here we are, heading through, and I think I was in Verstappen's dirty air because we go around turn 3, and that was a very clean corner. And as we go to the chicane of turns 5 and 6, this fast chicane, we have a very good entry and exit of that corner as well. So we're looking good to improve on our P1. I am stupid. I spoke too soon. We lose all the time we made up. But we still finished P1. In fact, uh, about five tenths ahead of Valerie Bottas in a Mercedes. If that proves that there's something wrong here, I don't know what does. Um. Anyway, the racing points do very well for themselves, but Albon Verstappen's down in P12. So the Red Bulls, the one of the most more dominant cars on the grid, are showing to have no pace around Azerbaijan. So. We're in for some crazy results. It's just as a comparison. The Haas of Kevin Magnussen is real is only a few tenths off of him. So, and that that's a very bizarre comparison. Make Geo's knocked out of Q1. Nothing surprising there. Here we are into the, our first lap of Q2. We make it P1 again, and well, not much is shown because I didn't really think that I did anything wrong with that lap. Like everything was really working for me, and we're almost a full second ahead of Valdry Bottas. But we decided to just go out again, just for fun, and this was, in fact, my fastest lap, so we'll lead you around this Azerbaijan, this Baku street circuit. Due to the 90 degree corner of turn 1, great overtake spot, with all the overspeed we're going to carry through sector 2, 
intersect and to turn to another 90 degree corner, setting us up for this DRS zone. And this is almost like this is what a normal track would have as a DRS zone. Uh, the main straight is uh, this on steroids. And this is another potentially good overtaking spot around turn 3, but again you have to be very careful because like any street circuit, the walls are very close to the circuit. Navigating turn 4, first right turn we've had so far. And here we are, do this fast moving chicanes, which is so hard to get right. And well, we do it. And here we are into this into sector two. We're, we're set up a red first sector, but we're going to make up so much time in the second sector because it's my weakest sector of the track. Navigating through the old city and heading towards the castle section, which turns eight till through twelve, and this is very hard to get right. As you can see, I miss my apex heading through the medieval walls of the old city, and that is just so hard to get right, especially on a controller. But here we are, do this fast section. Heading towards the end of sector 2, but you have to be very careful, you have to be quick on the brakes as there's a dip in elevation around turn 15. And navigate around turn 16, we set purple, we set a purple second sector, which sets us up for the fast, long, quick, I'm just finding adjectives to describe speed to describe this third sector, because it is phenomenal how much speed you can get through here if you get it right. And, heading, and the DRS just makes it even more powerful as we head down this long start finish straight towards the line. The end of qualifying, where does it go? We set a good lap time and it's P1. I mean, I mean, I, I was over dramatizing it, I will admit, because, well, yeah, that's just my job. Now Bond's out. Wow, okay, so, I mean, just to break the, 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 the immersion I'm giving, uh, this is w pretty much way after the patch that put that really lowered Albon's rating, so the podium finisher at the beginning of the season, not here with us anymore. But Verstappen didn't do very well either. But heading on to Q3, we get into Sebastian Vettel's dirty air, which really compromises our lines to the castle section. But that doesn't do anything for us, because we're up into P1 again. Good for us. But as you can see, Bottas is almost five mil hundredths of a second behind us. We have to go out again, but we go out too late. Hopefully Bottas hasn't set a faster time. And it's P1! We in an Alpha Romeo, we've made it onto provisional pole position by five one hundredths of a second. That's amazing, stupendous. Like there's no words to describe this. But we have a huge fight to, to, ahead of us because we have to hold off two Mercedes off the line. And Verstappen's in ninth. But let's just head into the race. And I'm just gonna increase the difficulty, because I don't believe I could have made pole position in Alpha, but let's head on to the race. Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and is made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge where the smallest of mistakes could lead to catastrophic consequences for all of our drivers. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today from the midfield teams who are trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you've got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Skip lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel, and Perez, Stroll, Ricardo, Verstappen, and Lando Norris, Sainz, Ocon, Alexander Albon, and Kvyat, Magnussen, Grosjean, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Pierre Gasly. Russell and Nicholas Latifi and now it's time to head down to the track okay so here we are in pole position and like I said monumental task with two Mercedes behind us we're going to do a two-stop because the tire wear is very similar to China and 
I forget the other track, Spain. But here we go, five red lights to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. And it's a great start for us. We get a stupendous start off the line. Take it a little wide into turn one, but we still got a great gap to the Mercedes behind us. So we have completely nailed this start. So could we get a first win? I mean, it's very possible to overtake in Azerbaijan, but I mean, this is our best opportunity, and here's the replay. Look at our jump off the line. You can see the two Mercedes jostling for position, but we have no one to deal with. We have so much clean air. And here we are, down the long straight to the end of lap one, still in P1, but while we have developed a gap to Hamilton, Bottas is still in our, t in our tailwind. He still has in DRS range, so we have to extend this gap before the DRS. So here we are to the fast section of the second part sector. Here we go, towards turn four, 15, but oh! Bruh. What is with me and street circuits? Oh god, so we've compromised everything. And I was considering just staying out, but I hit the wall with no downforce. Because while engine power is very important around Azerbaijan, you still need downforce on the city circuit. So we have to concede the spot to Valdry Bottas as we head into the pits. But, no, but because it's only lap 2, we haven't developed a gap and we're going to lose our spot. God, let's watch the replay, see what happened here. As you can see, I just mount the curb way too much. You can see on this view, my two left tires are off the track. So not only am I not getting any turning radius, because the turning rake, the front two wheels aren't against the ground. As you can see, I'm turning the wheel very hard to the left. But because there's no tire grip on the ground, I'm not slowing down either, because I'm not all the brakes are having any friction of the ground that are helping me reduce speed. As you can see from the nose cam, I'm just still positioned straight ahead, despite of the fact that my turning my wheel is turned all the way to the left, so all that momentum just carries us into the wall. Yup. And as I mentioned before, because it's only lap 2, we haven't developed a great gap, and we are screwed. Yup, so we're going into the mediums right away. God, when was the last time I went through a race without breaking my front wing? If I was a real life driver, like, I would be, I would, I'm just siphoning Race, the budget please. money so much especially for cost cap this year but thank you to the 2020 so we can we can still okay, manage but anyway here we are p20 and remember the tire wear on azerbaijan is really high so we might have to go into a set of hard tires at the very end which will screw us over and here we are at the end of lap four now but nicholas latif is ahead of us and look at the power of this main straight with the drs rich mix overtake mode on drs we dive down the outside of Nicholas TV and what a move we kind of go outside track limits but the stewards don't care about what happens at the back so we're fine but look at the replay here we'll just pause right here there's a full car length between me and Nicholas TV because of the this main straight and how overpowered the slipstream is I just carry so much overspeed and here we are and look it's our teammate in front of us Unfortunately, in this game, there's no team orders, but we're just going to go with it. Max Verstappen's out of the session. So that would explain the lack of pace he's shown all weekend. But let's look at the replay and see what happens. And th there's just... Oh, the engine just gives out. Look at all that smoke. Uh, stop the car, please. On track, Max. Stop the car, please. What a f***ing turbo the f***ing time of this f***ing honesty. Ah. Yeah, so Max Verstappen's not a happy camper, but... As you saw, his teammate Al Alex Albon almost ran into him, and as we head down into the third sector, yellow flags, and he's pulled off into a very dangerous part of the track. Why hasn't the safety car been called out for that? But, I mean, that would have really helped us, but, oh well, here we are. Anyway, here we are, same lap. Gio Venazzi's ahead of us, our teammate. He's not giving us any space, no team orders. We dived on the inside, he tries to cut us off, but we carry so much overspeed that it just doesn't work, and here we are, into P17. I may have over-dramatized that, but now we've got Gasly ahead of us. We still are in, we're in his DRS range. We dive down the inside into turn three. What a move! How close we were to the wall. That could have been dangerous. We could have had a repeat of turn 15 if we weren't careful, but what a move. Here's the replay, and you see again, almost a full car length away from Gasly, but with the DRS. Yeah, we just jump him. Amazing stuff by us. Here's a replay from Gasly, and he just had to give us space. You can see how quickly he jerked the wheel because he was trying to take that apex, but we just stole it from him. And here we are on George Russell, again in the slipstream. So we've basically made three overtakes 
in one lap. Looking good to make up positions, but we go way wide into turn one. That leaves George Russell enough room to try and mosey around on the inside, but we carry a lot of speed into the into the sec into turn two, and we just yeah we solidify the position. People are making their pit stops now. A lot of the soft tire runners, so we're onto in P13 now on the road, and here we are we're going to make a move around Leclerc, but oh we uh messy messy messy. I think Leclerc tr cuts us off a bit for making the dive bomb work, so we have to go on to the next lap to try and see if we can make a move on Leclerc. Here's to open the DRS, down the straight towards turn 3, you have to be very careful because like I said with Gasly, that corner is so easy to mess up as you go down the inside, Leclerc squeezes out, we hit the wall and I accidentally hit the pause button on my controller which... Jeff, what are you on? My, I broke my front wing a bit. Here's a replay from Leclerc, you can see, hit the wall. Okay, so some harsh words from Leclerc, but not entirely untrue. But anyway, here we are down this main street. We're going to try and make a move around Romain Grosjean in the Haas. But he, oh, he pulls out right across from us, and that could have been very dangerous. So we just decide to lay off. Hold the risky dive bombs, you know, let Daniel Ricciardo do all that. Here we are, lap 10. We're going to do this, see if we can do a similar move as we did on, on Leclerc. Heading into turn 3, DRS, open. Here we go, down them inside, and oh god, oh we hit the wall, and oh my god, we've done it again. See, Leclerc was right, and we do make contact with Romain Grosjean, but yeah, so we've got a broken front wing now. A new strategy is available on the MFT. And now Jeff is calling me into the pits. Here's the thing, okay, so I was actually, because when the your race engineer tells you to come into the pits for front wing change, typically that means that you're going to be sacrificing speed, but as you can see, as I navigate the castle section, it, the downforce is there, like, I don't feel much of a difference, so honestly, I'm thinking, we, if we make another pit stop, we, we, the race is over, we're not getting any points anymore, so let, I decided, let's just risk it, let's just hold it out and wait, keep, let's just hit again like we were going to on lap 14 I wish I could speak and yeah so that's that but I've delayed too long let's look at the replay and you can see uh, all the dive bombs I've been making in the early parts of this race has gotten me a little stupid because yeah you can see I hit the wall it almost kind of caused Grosjean to hit the wall as well and there contact between his front left and my right rear tires here's a replay from Grosjean's T-cam and yep they want to kill us a lot Wow, make, so I guess that's... Uh, I've lost count of the amount of enemies I've made in the last two races. But he, the the DRS advantage on the main straight is not only reserved to me, as you can see Grosjean and Haas, although they are the, above us in the performance index, his closing speed was incredible. So we've got to really start making up places and make sure that our team didn't we didn't stay out in vain. And well, as you can see, as we navigate the chicane of five, turns 5 and 6, we kind of show... Not much promise. Look, it's our rival Danny Kivyat in Alpha Tauri. We're gonna see if we can pass him. Rich and overtake mode on with DRS, and we just breeze past him before the corner. Yeah, take that. See, I guess after all the terrible things that have been happening to us, at least we get some victories. Now we're gonna take a move on Magnuson. Lap 12 now, I think I failed to mention. DRS, Rich and overtake, as usual, to get the maximum advantage. And we just look at that closing speed of the slipstream. We we pass Magnuson before we even reach the corner, so we just take it naturally. Good for us. We're up into P5 now. A lot of weird runners up here because of because of the medium tires. And oh god! I am stupid. Sorry, I had to censor that out. I uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep it PG. Pull Charles Leclerc again. Look at that. As you can see, I quieted the wall, and I'm lucky that just the, the, that the right end plate was the only thing that came off. Thankfully, we're already on lap 14, so we, we were going to pit here anyways, but I'm just going to be in the pits longer now. God. And I made it so many positions, like I'm in P5 on the road, and I'm with the alternate strategy runners right now. I could, uh, anyways, here we are, we're pitting now. P5 on the road, we're just going to go down. See how far we go down. And knowing our pit crew, they're not going to give us a very fast pit stop either. So, God, this race. Literally, literally, like, we went from hero, and now we're down to zero. Yup. 
9.1 second pit stop. I'm not salty, you are. I'm sorry, anyway. P17, Norris passes us on the road, and now we've got a lot of moves to do. But thankfully, everyone ahead of us is on the hard tire. So we'll, be, we'll have a tire advantage now over the people in front of us. Here we are on Lando Norris through this fast second sector. We are making time. We are catching up to him pretty quickly. But oh, we ride the curb again. We lose the back end slightly, but we're able to catch it this time. Thankfully, I would not have wanted to have another front wing change. Here we are, main straight. You know the drill. Overtake, DRS, rich mix. Pass him just like Magnuson. Smooth as you like it. Stay within track limits, thank you, and here we are, P16. Excellent job. Gro Grosjean next on the Haas. Let's just keep it rolling. Keep it close with him on the next lap, and here we go. DRS, rich and overtake. I should just come up with a, re with a recording the amount of times I've been doing this. He's at the space. We pass. Excellent. Right before turn three, before I crash again. And now we're just picking people off. We set the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, too. So an excellent job by us. And we just set um, personal best. So we didn't even get track best sectors. And we've caught up to Magnuson now. Take P14. He locks up into turn two, which will give us a better run at him. DRS, rich mix, and overtake. I gotta find new ways of saying it, because I'm bored of saying it, too. Here we are, catching up. We're gonna see if we can do a dive, but he closes us off on the inside. We still take the inside line, and ooh, we collide right into his side. Thankfully no punctures for him and no damage for us. So yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. I mean I mean we, we we've had altercations of Magnuson before. We're not planning to race for Haas anytime soon. So it all works out for us. But Magnuson's not gonna be happy. What a load of bullshit. Yup. Yep, I'm basically Nico Hulkenberg now, cause of everything. Anyway, Gasly and Joe Venazzi are next, but they pit now. Which is odd, because they're on hard tires. Why are they pitting now? I get my answer very soon, because I see Carlos Sainz as he exits the pits, and he's on the soft tire. So a lot of the other drivers have done some radical strategies, and now our tire advantage on the mediums are gone, because the soft tire is going to be a quicker tire, and with only with less than 10 laps to go, I think I might have just taken a wrong strategy call. So while his tires, signs his tires are heating up, we take, make a ballsy move around the outside into turn three, and we take the position, which is good because we ultimately we need that. Next is Ocon, but as we navigate the chicane of turns five and six, oh, I have to brake really quickly because I'm about to run into the wall. And signs of the better tire advantage retakes the place. So I try to make another move around turn seven, but that doesn't work because I have to give signs space. I have to be respectful because honestly, I need some friends in Formula One right now. As you can see on this replay, you can see I take I go way too I, I go way too far on the curb on the first turn, so that sets me up doesn't set me up for a good entry into the next chicane, which ultimately gives signs the space to pass me. He must be thrilled by this. Okay, I didn't think he was gonna be that happy for a ninth place. But anyway, here we are. We're gonna see if we can do it again. Rich overtake and DRS. Going heading to turn three. Gonna do a risky dive bomb. Here we go. Late on the brakes. We're side by side of Carlos Sainz. I don't know if we made contact or not. Did we? I don't think so. Oh, I guess no contact. Then again, Jeff doesn't really know what he's talking about sometimes. Good move for up by my ass. Actually, but as we head into sector three, Daniel Ricardo is actually on the same strategy as Sainz on the soft tire. So we've got two people to worry about. And as we head toward down the long straight to the kink of turn 20, and yeah, this is where it gets crazy, and Ricardo passes signs. And look at that, the Renault flying towards us. The overspeed that Ricardo is showing, the pace is stupendous on the soft tires. So we're, we've got a lot to worry about. We've passed signs, but now we've got another enemy. So hopefully, we need to pass Ocon. Here we go. Rich overtaken DRS. Passing Ocon, who's on the same, same strategy as us. So hopefully he'll serve as a bit of a roadblock to his teammate. We dive into turn one. Great move, and we're up at the P8. So hopefully, Ocon will be able to slow Ricardo down and slow his pace, which will ultimately help us in our fight to catch up with Albon and Stroll. I take that back. Ricardo made that easy on the next lap. Yup. Anyway, lap 24 now. Two laps left in this race. It's very overcast, which means it's going to be very cold. 
but here we are, DRS, Rich, Mix, and Overtake, gonna see if we can pass Albon now, and hopefully make it up, he, we, he defends the inside, we go on the outside, on the outside, and Albon makes, really defends well, we have to break late, oh, that's too late, though. oh, that's the wall, oh my god, I've done it again. Yeah, as you can see, I started breaking way after the 50 meter board, and there goes our left end blade. As for comparison, you can see from Albon, although we start breaking, he starts breaking right before the 50, and gives him more time, space to navigate. Yeah, so I think this is our finishing position. I don't think we're going to pass anyone else. Actually, no, I think we're going to get worse, because Ricardo is all along our backside, because of the lack of downforce we had through the castle section. And here we are, onto the main straight. DRS, Rich Mix. Not DRS, ERS and Rich Mix, but unfortunately it's not enough. We try to squeeze Ricardo out, but Ricardo is so persistent, we eventually just have to end up giving him the space. And he, we try to dive through turn one, but Ricardo, last of the late breakers, does this in. Look at it from his T-cam, look at that overspeed he has over us. Like, the Renault is a better car than us, but, like, this is ridiculous. And, okay, I was a little aggressive trying to squeeze him out, but, I mean, I, I really wanted to keep the position, but he just, you know, makes it look easy. <laughs> And he's a very happy Australia Aussie man after that move. So now we're going to see if we can make it on the outside of Ricardo. We don't. We mess up the chicane very badly as we make it back onto the racing line where thankful Science doesn't overtake us. Wow, I'm starting to become very salty. Here we are into the last lap. Science is approaching us at a rate of naught, similar to Ricardo because of those soft tires. And we just kind of give him the space. But we're going to pull the wily old Fox game because we know the DRS zone, uh, detection zone is right around here, and so maybe we can take him back on the next on this DRS straight. Heading through turn two, we get the DRS, and we're going to see if we can pass him again with Rich and Overtake. Here we go, trying to take P9 now. Golly, can you remember we were on pole position to begin this race? Anyway, we pass him with ease right before the corner, and there's P9. And Ricardo actually made up tons of places because Albon's ahead of him. Valdry Bottas wins the Grand Prix, so another Mercedes win. I. Okay, and then, well, here we go, but as you can see, we've caught up to Albon quite quickly because on his hard tire, so we can take P8 from him, but, and we can use the slipstream of this corner. Epic music, now! So here we go, we're going to see if we can pass Albon. We pull on the Rich and the ERS, putting all the pace in, but our battery is so depleted that we run out right before the DRS zone. So here we are, we have to use it all right here. Overspeed, overspeed, overspeed. Here we go, right towards the line, this is the line, here we go, we're on the outside and the line's too close. So it's almost a photo finish, but, oh god, yeah, I don't know, I just, oh, I need one driver today too. So this race, eh, not very good, but better than Monaco. Here we are then, it's victory in Azerbaijan, great work from the whole team here at the track, and back at the factory as well, and some pretty handy driving for good measure. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Yeah, so, I mean, no, terrible race, honestly, terrible. We are so close to Albon. If we had one more lap, we would have done it. And here's my point. Look at this picture. I mean, it was the one I used for the thumbnail. But look at that photo finish, practically. Like, we were right there. If the line, even though the line was extended a little more, we could have done it. But ultimately, not to happen. And another Mercedes 1 2, which could have easily been prevented. And I forgot to mention, actually, that Sergio Perez gets a podium. So, I mean,. I guess this race was good, as mean as the spectacle, and we get a different podium. Here's another podium for us, but ultimately for our race, it was pretty terrible. I mean, at least we scored points this race, and I guess we did finish above our main rival and our teammate, but aside from that, there's not much consolation. Daniel Ricciardo makes it to P6, so that pace he was showing on those soft tires really got me thinking, perhaps we screwed up the strategy a bit. 
but the standings, nothing really changes for us, besides the fact that Max Verstappen with his DNF goes into third in the championship, so now it's a Mercedes 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship. And, well, we got some points, too, but we do fall below because Racing Point had an amazing race with Perez's podium, and I don't know where Stroll was, because I don't care. Anyway, and but we do beat Kvyat in the rivalry, so I guess it's not all doom and gloom. And we could take our rivalry in the next race. And hopefully you'll join us for our next race, our home Grand Prix in Canada. Thank you all for watching. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe down below. Share the video, show the love, and I'll see you in our next video. I'm Isolation Gamer 05. Stay safe out there in this crazy world. Keep gaming, and until next time, stay tuned. And as always, peace out.